hello, and welcome on into another episode of the Whiskey Crusaders. I'm Will. I'm Sarah. And I'm Matt. Today we're talking about Iron Root and their Harbinger whiskey. We have in front of us today a YouTube-only pick. A bunch of YouTubers got together and picked this bottle, uh, including us. So we're pretty excited to be uh, talking about it and reviewing it today. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and click that notification bell. Matt, why don't you tell us how we came about this bottle? All right. We're fresh our memory. How do fresh we our memory. How do we do this? It's been a year. All right. So, yeah, God, it hasn't looked been a year. That's terrifying. All right. So this is Iron Root. Um, we've had Iron Root on the channel multiple times. Obviously, we are good friends with the Licorice Brothers. And, uh, yes. Uh, so because of that, we just want to make sure it's still our own opinions and everything. But. Obviously, we love Iron Root. We love Robert and Jonathan, so it's it's not going to make any difference. But they're they're awesome people, and we've been in this story multiple times. And all right, so Iron Root itself, we're we still started. honest to, to good people, though. So oh, absolutely, you know. yeah. If we think it sucks. We're we're more than happy to tell you it sucks. Yes, I, I think will. we uh, we've done it before, <laughs> so it's no big deal. But anyway, so we uh, we've actually never reviewed an Iron Root bottle somehow, which is pretty funny. But Iron Root's name comes from the fact that back in the 1800s there was a horrible phylloxera uh, pandemic, basically, except for it was in the vines over in France. And the vines were all going to die. So there was a Dr. Munson in Denison, Texas. And he came up with the iron root, which basically he spliced together the Texas grapes with the grapes over in France, and they then became resistant to phylloxera. So and and let me just let me okay. just kind of give you know a little bit more on this. So what he did was he cut the root stock off of Texas grapes, uh, and then he grafted other vines onto it. So you could continue growing Chardonnay, you could continue growing Sauvignon Blanc, you could continue growing whatever you were growing originally on this other rootstock now. And this was the first time that that had ever been done. So that was a, a big, big deal. We, we really almost lost wine. It was a massive, massive deal. Yes. So, and because of him in this little town of Denison, Texas, which I don't know, it's, it's not a big city. As, uh, the sister city of it is Cognac in France. So basically, all grapes in France are Texas grapes. Just want to let everybody know that. So, which is pretty funny. But so, which it's a true statement. They're all Texas grapes. They, they can't be helped. So the anyway, Liquors Brothers, they opened up the distillery uh, in 2014. And it says Robert was a lawyer, was going to be a lawyer, and Jonathan was going to is a was a bioengineer. And they decided he doesn't want to be a lawyer, a bunch of them. We're going to be distillers. Mm -hmm. Hey, mom and dad. Thanks. Thanks for these degrees. We're going to go be distillers. So for a couple of years, they went and uh, learned how to be distillers. Nancy Frehley worked with them, which is pretty awesome. So they actually distill in the French tradition and in Elevage, which basically means they proof down in barrel. So very slowly, I think over several months, put barrel in to, to proof it down. So theirs gets a much more oily, rich feeling to it when they do that, which is pretty awesome. So anyway, this YouTuber pick comes in at 131.86. So it's probably not proofed down. No, this is not proofed down. This is the YouTuber barrel pick, which, which was 16 channels at the Bastards Ball, got together at Salt Lick there, which is, that, which is down the street from the Whiskey Vault. And we decided, it's big, more or less in secrecy, did this with no one really knowing on purpose mm -hmm. so that we could pick this bottle. And this is barrel 256. This, like I said, is 131.86. This is the second highest proof iron it's ever released. It is 95% uh, yellow dent and then 5% uh, bloody butcher corn. So this is 100% corn bourbon. And then, of course, enzymes. Uh, it, would say it is a number one char with a heavy toast, and it's 32 mm -hmm. months old. So, yeah, I got together with Robert and said, hey, Robert, let's do something really cool. Uh, how would we do an iron? How would we do a pick with all the channels? And he's like, okay. We'll make it happen, and we did. And to be honest with you, uh, I talked to Robert the other day, and he said this is probably the very best barrel they've ever made. So all I can say is we got it right then. We really did. Yes, indeed. Uh, it, uh, they brought us quite a few samples down there yeah. uh, in all 16 YouTube channels, which is a lot more than 16 people. Um, yeah, it was 30. Sat down and wow. you know went through them and, and talked about them and, and took notes and, and kind of made a decision. and. It was a pretty clear, concise vote for this barrel. Uh, yeah. I don't remember really anybody not loving this when we picked it. Yeah, I think the funny thing is I got late because I got stuck in traffic with the rain. And I sat down at the table. I was like, that one. 
that must be it. Robert's like, you're going to be really happy. That's the one they picked. I'm like, good, because this is the only choice. It's not even close. Yeah, yeah. It nothing, was... Yeah, and you're right. Nothing was close to how amazing this this smelled and tasted when we were there picking. That was definitely a, a great experience, though, to get that many channels in, that many different Talents. tastes and palettes mm-hmm. together sure. to actually come down to one barrel that we all yeah pretty yeah. much pretty much all all agreed on i don't I mean know. for somebody like from ed and the rock gut review to agree with sarah from its bourbon night to agree for, with with you to agree mm-hmm. with i mean it, it was really amazing to see all of these different palettes uh kind of lining up everybody lining up towards this it was really fun plus it was a heck of a lot of fun to sit there with all these channels some of them meeting for the first time and some um, of us we've known for you know a year now and and some of us we we've, we've met at the first bastards ball right you know um it, just sitting down and getting to know these people in person that we've talked to online so many times mm-hmm. and you know it was a really good experience overall yeah. not just picking an awesome barrel cuz yeah. yeah we did that but the whole point was it was a great icebreaker for everybody to get together and meet and oh yeah all this and we have other plans for other things that I've got in the works unfortunately the bastards ball is canceled for this year but I've got other things working with some other people that's really going to be cool. But uh, all the yeah. other future channels are going to release reviews too. And we'll link once we'll, ours will be first. Um, they'll all be linked together with all the channels mm. to see what everybody thinks of it. You can't even give any nosing. We, we should give nosing. We should probably do our job now. After Did we, we not give nosing notes? Over. No, we just said it was good. Oh my yeah. God. Sorry. Uh, we spent so much time talking. I figured we had given nosing notes already. We haven't talked about it yet. No, oh, this is so yummy. this has definitely got the Texas stamp, and it's also, of course, got the Iron Root stamp. If definitely. you've had Iron Root before, you know what that is. Yeah, it's that it's that corn. Yeah, it's that corniness yeah, it's that, that Iron Root corn has. in the Texas heat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it makes it. a oh. good mixture. Yeah, it does for them. But it also has a lot of nice fruity notes. Um, mm-hmm. I get a little bit of like the fruit strike gum going on there. Yeah, quite a bit of cherry, quite a bit of apple. Cherry, apple. It's it's very fruity mm-hmm. along with your, you know, normal bourbon type of notes. Baking spices. Baking and, spices. Mm-hmm. Yeah, usual, you know, brown sugar, leather. Leather. Or scotch. But then it gets like these figs and raisins. Yeah. And sugar, uh, Rich fruit. Dark chocolate, like a high cacao. Um, like a warm buttered toast, but it's also got this coming off this like this like a faint not, not like a grape, but like like a wine. It's got this wine nose to yeah. it. I think it's just the way they distill in that French style. It really does like a red wine. Yeah, that's exactly what I think. It's like a like like a tempranillo is what I'm picking up. And it looks like your bottle is about as far down as well, maybe a little bit further down than our bottle. No, I mean it's about the same. It's about the same. a little bit over the label. That's where um, we are too. Yeah, and. I mean, so it's it's opened up a little bit, mm-hmm. but it is different than the first time that we had it. It is. And and when we got the bottle. Um, so it has changed some, but I think it's changed for the good. I think it's gotten a little bit, not necessarily more complex, but it's just more richer. dialed in. Richer. Yeah, richer might be a better way to say it. Mm-hmm. it. I feel like the flavors have kind of come together a little bit better since the bottle's been opened. Yeah, yeah. I think all the flav- same flavors were there. Kind of rounded out. But everything is just kind of rounded out now that the air is And the to proof it. is not on the nose. Like, no. It, it's not like attacking your nose. It's not on the palate you... either to me. No, no. Well, y'all no. haven't gotten there. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. It just tastes probably like it's 110, 105, 110, somewhere in there. It mm-hmm. tastes like it's 100, almost 130, 132. I mean, holy Yeah, crap. get that slight smokiness on the finish that just kind of just the rounds out the whole thing and then it's got this growing Mm -hmm. from the from the bottom up Mm -hmm. warming feeling so for me the journey across the palate is you get your normal baking spices in the front Mm -hmm. shot with you know the brown sugar and the cinnamon Mm -hmm. um more cinnamon and then it goes through those the fruits and then it goes through that smoky leathery finish at the end yeah, I, I agree with all of these notes. They're, it's this is wonderful. It's I like so it good. as much now as I liked it then. I I, I love. I'm gonna try some water in it. 
I love the fruit notes in it because probably the only time I'm going to put water in this whiskey unless it uh, oh, yeah. unless something magical happens. Yeah, it's it's incredibly oily. Um, that fig and mm -hmm. caramel, that chocolate, and now it's like a buttery toast, like a great jam. A little raspberry, uh, like a rich topsoil with that corn. But now, yeah. especially on the taste, even that that tempranillo is what I really pick up, at, and I don't know why, but I think it's just the the way they do it. It's that wine type yeah. of back. I get that raspberry, Ooh. but I get a little bit of like a chocolate covered raspberry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. Oh, and especially with the water. Yeah. The chocolate note actually kind of gets dialed, dialed up. up. Very this interesting. Probably is one of the best whiskeys I own. Not yeah, this really is, that this is you can finish it so oh, good. A bit more. Oh my gosh. Because it and, changed it pretty drastically for only a three year old whiskey. Oh, yeah. But yeah. The oh, yeah, it's only 32 months old. So it's not even quite three years. So yeah. yeah the, the chocolate note on this to me. Um, when you add the water, kind of makes it almost like a powdered chocolate. Like if you were gonna buy that that coca yeah. that you like make with put in cookie mix to make chocolate cookies. Yeah, um, it's, it's more of the powdered side of the chocolate, which isn't bad. But um, I, I prefer the chocolate, not the water. Yeah, I do too. The, like because it, it tastes more like a chocolate covered mm -hmm. like right. an raspberry, actual like i dip them raspberries in that melted chocolate mm -hmm. a real deal but it's not bad it does no. it does dial that up a lot but it dials down a lot of the fruit notes for me wow like i said that becomes a chocolate raspberry okay you know what this reminds me of there's an elijah craig pick that adam has that's a chocolate raspberry. This reminds me a lot of like an Elijah Craig. This is freaking awesome. Yeah, I, I yeah, Elijah yeah. usually has a lot of that fruitiness too, doesn't it? That red fruit. Mm -hmm. I really like a, a fruity bourbon. Me too. I really do. And I'm finding as I go through more and more of them, the higher fruit have a lot more fruit. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, best part is it's 60 bucks now. Yeah. There are only 75 bottles, so there was a select few of you that were thankfully able to get this bottle. Now, I will say this. I know it's horrible, but so anybody that has one, we would appreciate if you'd share it with your friends. As anyone obviously that comes here will get to share it. I think that's pretty much in this community. Um, but this has got to be seriously one of the best bottles of bourbon I've ever had. This thing is incredible. Yeah. I, I can't say enough good things now. It's so rich and dense. There's going to be another special release of this because there was an accident at the distillery. So there was going to be more bottles of this. Well, we were supposed to do, well, I mean, I guess we can explain it. We were supposed to do an evolution barrel with this, meaning we were going to bottle a third of it, wait a little while, bottle a third of it, wait a little while, bottle the rest of it, right? Uh, so that we could actually taste what the wood impact would do if we would have left it in the barrel essentially for however long. Uh, but there was kind of a mix-up at the distillery. Well, there was that, and there was two, there was a big demand for it for obvious reasons. Yeah. Well, we were going to just bottle the rest of the barrel because we we oh. only taken seventy five out. We were going to bottle the rest so could, more people could have it. That's okay. Well, somebody forgot that it was the the barrel was turned the other way, and they looked at the bot didn't realize because one side says YouTube all over it, other side says nothing. It got dumped in Armagnac cask. So in October, there's going to be an Armagnac cask version of this. Which will be probably unfreaking believable. Probably even better somehow. Yep. So I can only imagine we'll definitely give you guys a review of that when we get that one when it comes out in October. But uh, we do want to say thank you very much to Robert and Jonathan and Marsha and everybody else, Iron Reap, for treating us amazing at Salt Lake and for allowing us to pick this barrel with you guys. And this thing was freaking fantastic. And just yeah, yeah, thank you YouTubers for coming all over the country and picking this with us. So the peeps up there in general. Awesome. So if you're in the area, you haven't checked them out, check them out. Yeah, go to Denison. They're good make people. The, make the drive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's totally worth it. Yeah, some of the greatest people you'll meet in the whiskey business. They will treat you like family. They're just awesome, down-to-earth people. Oh, uh, yeah. Know, you know, regular Harbinger, which we'll get you guys a review on, um, is at least at some total wines around the country. But that's the way. But unfortunately, like I said, this is just a pick. But, uh, you know, only probably like the greatest pick ever. But it is what it is. Right, the regular Harbinger is really good too. Yeah. I mean, it's it's yeah, Iron Root is doing some really good things, and yep. and uh, well, I can't doing, wait to see the rest of the things they're coming out with. I, I'm really enjoying a lot of the peated things they're doing uh, over there as well. They got Meh. a couple of Isla barrels, and they're having some fun. Wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> we'll have a review on that too soon. The new um, Icarus. Yay! 
Oh, I know it's Sarah's All so. right. <laughs> I'm thrilled. It's probably the only thing that I'm not a fan of that Iron Root puts out. Yeah. It's the Peter stuff. You, see you can't think of it. You might you like it. You never know. Mm, no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But I'll just drink this while That's you guys fair. drink that. Or one of the many other Iron Root bottles that we have uh -huh. on hand. <laughs> All right. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And until next time. Keep on crusading. Put a whiskey in your glass. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. So freaking good. Yeah, it is.